Hello everyone, Vincent Thiel from HGTV Test here. I'm a TV reviewer and professional calibrator. I know some of you have been extremely confused by the various HDMI 2.1 features implemented on different television sets that were unveiled or announced at CES by different TV brands. And in this video, I'm going to break down each individual HDMI 2.1 feature to explain to you why are they important, whether you actually truly need it in the next television you purchase. So as far as I'm concerned, there are a number of important or more well-publicized HDMI 2.1 feature that were contained within the HDMI 2.1 specifications. They are namely higher frame rate or resolution. This means, for example, 4K at 120Hz or 8K at 60Hz. Dynamic HDR, this means HDR formats with dynamic metadata support, for example, Dolby Vision or HDR10+. Various gaming related features, including variable refresh rate or VRR, auto low latency mode or ALLM, quick media switching or QMS, and also quick frame transport or Q. FT. And then last but not least is enhanced ARC or EARC for transmission of lossless audio over the audio return channel. So I'm going to delve into each of these features and I'm going to start off with the easiest one, migrating to the more difficult one. That's really how I do things really. I just love to procrastinate <laughs> the difficult stuff. And I've been researching methods to deal with procrastination, but I'll tell you all about them later. So let's start off with the easiest one, which is Dynamic HDR. And to be fair, even though Dynamic HDR or HDR formats with Dynamic Metadata support has been outlined or specified in HDMI 2.1, realistically, this feature can already be implemented even on HDMI 2.0. So for example, some of the 2016 LG OLEDs, maybe the B6 or C6, they can already play back Dolby Vision material with dynamic metadata. So from that point of view, I don't think you really need to worry about the dynamic metadata side of things because all of the 2019 televisions will be able to play back HDR content with dynamic metadata embedded. For example, Dolby Vision or HDR10+. I think the only thing that you really need to worry about is whether the specific television set that you eventually purchase will support either Dolby Vision or HDR10+, only Panasonic and TP Vision at this time I filmed this video in January 2019 have announced that they will be supporting both HDR10+, and also Dolby Vision. LG and Sony, they are still sticking only with Dolby Vision. They believe that their own proprietary dynamic tone mapping will be able to produce a picture that is as good as HDR10+, which is why they are not actually supporting HDR10+. On the other side, you have Samsung, which is only supporting HDR10+, but not Dolby Vision. The next big thing is basically the higher frame rate and higher resolution. Now, when we talk about higher frame rate or resolution, essentially we're talking about bandwidth. HDMI 2.0 has a maximum bandwidth of 18 gigabits per second. HDMI 2.1 has a maximum bandwidth of 48 gigabits per second. So there is a lot more bandwidth to allow for higher resolution and also higher frame rate. But realistically, if you're not actually buying an 8K tele, I'm not entirely sure how important this higher bandwidth is unless you are a PC gamer. Let me explain. So if you buy an 8K television, obviously you will want to watch 8K content, maybe 8K at 24Hz or even 8K at 60Hz if you are into sports. But realistically, these materials are not going to come anytime soon. There is no plan for an 8K Blu-ray from my interview with Victor Masuda, who is the president of the Blu-ray Disc Association. And according to Mr. Paul Gray, who is an analyst I really respect at IHS Market, 
8K is really slow to come along in the broadcast world as well due to bandwidth and various infrastructure issues. So from that point of view, I think 8K content is unlikely to come through anytime soon. And if you're not really buying an 8K tele, if you're only buying a 4K tele, you can really ignore the 8K side of things. Now, 4K at 120Hz is certainly interesting, but again, due to the bandwidth restriction and also infrastructure that has been in place in various broadcast facilities, it is extremely unlikely that we will be suddenly switching to 4K at 120Hz anytime soon. I think even trying to broadcast 4K at 60Hz is going to be a big ask for these broadcasters. But what is important for PC gamers is in terms of the higher bandwidth. So let's say if you own a PC with a really high-end video card and if you want to play games at maybe 144Hz, maybe with a variable refresh rate, then maybe this extra bandwidth that is allowed for by HDMI 2.1 is important. But until then, let's say if you're only watching movies, if you're only streaming movie type content, if you're only watching regular broadcast, I think you can safely ignore the higher bandwidth, the higher frame rate and resolution that is within HDMI 2.1. So the higher resolution and higher bandwidth realistically is only important to PC gamers who require that higher bandwidth to either play games at 144 Hz, maybe at a slightly lower resolution, maybe at full chroma, maybe with variable refresh rate or VRR shown in. So the bandwidth side of things, higher frame rate and higher resolution are only important to high-end PC gamers at this moment in time. So I've covered that and I've covered Dynamic HDR. Let's move on to the next bit, which is again, let's continue on the gaming side since we are talking about gaming, variable refresh rate. So variable refresh rate is an extremely important technology, especially for gamers out there, because what it does is that it syncs up the game's frame rate to the display's refresh rate to minimize any tearing or any judder when you are playing fast action games. But VRR, as far as I'm concerned, is only important to gamers. So if you don't game, VRR is not going to help with your stutter in news broadcast. VRR is not going to be helping with the judder in 24 frames per second movies. You know, so VR, realistically speaking, is only applicable for gamers who can actually take advantage of it. Okay, so that's VR. Next, we go to ALLM or Auto Low Latency Mode. So what this feature does is to automatically switch your TV into the low latency mode or more commonly known as game mode whenever a game is detected on a console. So for example, last year in 2018, the only TVs that supported ALLM were from Samsung. And when you pair up a Samsung ALLM enabled television with the Xbox One X, which also supports ALLM, then when you play a game, the Samsung television will automatically switch into game mode. And when you play a movie content, because of a different frame rate that the movie uses, then the TV will switch out of game mode into whatever picture mode that you were using before, hopefully the most accurate movie mode. So how important is LLM then? That's the thing, you know, I mean, obviously switching into game mode automatically is extremely convenient and I can't fault you for wanting it on your next 2019 TV that you purchase. But realistically, even without LLM, there are other methods to switch to game mode as well. Obviously, you can switch it manually, although painful, you can still actually engage game mode manually using a remote control. Or on some TVs, you can use a voice control or voice command to tell it to switch into game mode. So from that point of view, I don't think LLM is a killer feature that you must have. Whereas VRR is different. VRR, you either have it or you don't. So for gamers out there, if you really want VRR, you need to wait to buy a TV with VRR to reduce the tearing and to reduce the judder uh, when you are playing games because VR is a feature that you either have it or you don't. So gaming related features I've covered, dynamic metadata I've covered, higher frame rate and resolution I've covered, and the last feature that I really want to cover is enhanced ARC or EARC. 
Now, ARC or audio written channel only has enough bandwidth to support lossy audio formats, for example, Dolby Digital Plus. But Enhanced ARC actually expands the bandwidth to allow for lossless audio formats such as Dolby True HD or DTS Master Audio. Now, here's the thing, you know, I've been researching how important is ERC actually to try and get Dolby True HD audio, let's say from an internal TV app, let's say Netflix or Amazon Prime Video to your speakers. And as far as I'm aware, I don't think, you know, it is really that important. And the reason is this, Netflix and Amazon Prime Video so far have been using lossy audio formats. So even though they are sending Dolby Atmos out, they are sending it Dolby Digital Plus, which is already supported in the ARC specification or audio written channel specification. So even if you only have an ARC port, you can already enjoy Dolby Atmos or in the future, let's say DTSX audio from these apps as long as Netflix and Amazon Prime Video they don't really upgrade to output Dolby True HD and DTS Master Audio anytime soon and I really don't foresee I mean obviously famous last words but again because of bandwidth concerns it is quite unlikely that these lossless formats will be implemented or sent out by these streaming services anytime soon. So you don't really need ERRC to extract Dolby Atmos audio from Netflix or Amazon Prime Video on your TV. And when you watch a 4K Blu-ray with DTS Master Audio or with Dolby True HD, what you can do is instead of using ERC to route the audio through the tele and then the tele back, what you can do is to route the audio directly to your receiver. You can get these lossless audio formats that way. So most high-end 4K Blu-ray players, they usually have a dual HDMI out, one for audio and video and the other one for audio only. And the second audio HDMI out can be used for this purpose to send out the lossless audio codec to your receiver so that you can still enjoy Dolby True HD. So from that point of view, ERC is not important. Where ERC is going to be important is, let's say, if you really want to minimize your cable run, you want to clean up your cable clutter, and you just want to run a single HDMI cable from your source device to the receiver to the TV, and then all of it can switch on and switch off automatically without an extra remote control of the receiver, then ERC may be important if you want to actually get Dolby True HD or DTS Master Audio from your 4K Blu-ray disc. The other important thing within ERC that may be crucial for users out there is probably this mandatory lip sync correction feature under the enhanced ARC specification. And again, until we test it out, we don't really know how effective this will be. So these are the main HDMI 2.1 features that are available on 2019 TV sets. And I'm going to show you a chart here where I will tell you which TV manufacturer supports which HDMI 2.1 feature on which televisions. TBC means to be confirmed, which means that you know we still need more information, forthright information from the TV brand in question as to whether their TV will support this feature. But from what I can tell, the LG 2019 OLEDs, whether they are 4K or 8K, will have higher bandwidth support, will have enhanced ARC, will have auto low latency mode, and will have variable refresh rate. So if you really want a 2019 TV that supports all these HDMI 2.1 features, even though you may or may not need it, maybe you just want the full suite, you just want to future-proof your TV, then LG is definitely the one to go for. Now, I know some of you may be angry or cross at me for getting my prediction last year wrong that I predicted that there will be no true HDMI 2.1 television at CES 2019. Obviously, I was totally wrong, but my prediction was in line with 
many expectations of industry insiders and I think you know LG have really sprung a surprise they have really pulled the rabbit out of the hat to implement a true 48 gigabits per second HDMI 2.1 chip on their 2019 TVs and I really do salute them for doing that obviously it leaves me with egg on my face but you know you can't get everything right but because of this wrong prediction it has severely dented my confidence so even now when I queue up in the supermarket to pay for something I have stopped trying to predict which queue will go faster I mean in the old days I used to look at the queue on the other side and if there's an old lady maybe she's going to pay by check so I try to avoid that line if there is a hipster with airports hanging out of his ears maybe he'll be paying by apple pay which is going to be very very quick so i may actually jump to that queue i've stopped doing all that now since i've got my hdmi 2.1 prediction wrong so lg will be supporting most of the hdmi 2.1 features from the point of view of panasonic they will only be supporting allm or auto low latency mode due to the MediaTek chipset that they are using on their 2019 OLEDs and also LED LCD televisions. But obviously they will be supporting Dolby Vision in addition to HDR10 Plus as well. Now from Sony, what I can tell is that they will be supporting EARC or Enhanced ARC on the AG9 or A9G. But on the 8K sets, the ZG9 or Z9G, they will be supporting the higher frame rate and resolution in terms of 8K at 60Hz and 4K at 120Hz at least on one port. From Samsung, again, details are extremely sketchy until they are launched maybe next month or the month after in March. But since their 2018 sets already support ALLM and variable refresh rate, I would expect their 2019 TVs to support both variable refresh rate and also auto low latency mode. And obviously from the dynamic metadata side of things, they will be supporting HDR10+. From TP Vision, they will be supporting Dolby Vision and HDR10+, on the dynamic metadata front. And then on the gaming front, they will only be supporting ALM, auto low latency mode again, due to the MediaTek chipset used similar to what Panasonic is actually implementing on their sets. So those are the major manufacturers in the UK covered. I think throughout this video, I've been saying HDMI 2.1, even though HDMI licensing have been saying HDMI 2.1. I mean, it just feels strange to me. I just like to say HDMI 2.1. After all, you know, we say pointy nipples. We don't really say dotty nipples, do we? So, so I'll keep saying HDMI 2.1. But yes, those are the benefits conferred by different HDMI 2.1 features and I hope you have a better understanding of what they actually do, which one is important to you. If you're a gamer, if you don't game at all, if you only watch movies, if you only watch sports, you know, you have a better understanding of which features are important to you to help you make a better decision when you are buying your next television. If you found this video useful, please click the like button and subscribe to the HGTV Test YouTube channel for more videos like this. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.